This is straight from the you can't make it up or you couldn't make it up files. A 27-year-old man in India is suing his parents for giving birth to him without his consent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you heard me right. He is suing his mum and his dad for bringing him into the world without asking him first. Raphael Samuel claims that it's wrong for parents to bring children into the world because then they have to put up with all of life's... And we all know how the other word goes. Let's say lifelong suffering. Although Raphael does concede that consent, of course, can't exactly be sought before we're born, he nevertheless insists, and he makes this as a legal point, and he's got a very good lawyer, he says, that, I quote, it's not our decision to be born. Well, joining us live now from uh, Mumbai, hence a very slight satellite delay, so bear with us, is Raphael Samuel himself. Is it good morning or good afternoon to you, uh, Raphael, there? Uh, it's good evening, currently. Good evening. All right. Yeah. Well, lovely to talk to you. All right. Ta yeah. Talk us through this. How did you come to this decision that the time had come to sue your parents for bringing you onto planet Earth? So basically, uh, suing in itself is not the intention. I do not intend. I don't want money. I don't want fame or anything. But the idea is a wider idea, actually. That uh, at least I, at least in India, most of the parents take their children for granted. They're like, if I had you, I'm doing something good to you. Out here, I want to put a concept that no, you, uh, the, your children don't owe you, and you don't own your children, and your children don't have to give you anything. In fact, you owe your children. So you think fundamentally that, and I'm a, I'm a father, I've got, uh, I've got four children, I've got two stepsons, and I've got two children by my, my second marriage. You're saying that fundamentally we're being completely selfish when we decide to have children. Absolutely, absolutely. There's no question of it. See, you had children for your joy. Okay, you, ha you have a certain joy seeing them grow up, seeing them smile, seeing them play. That is your joy. You did not think of the child and forget thinking about the suffering that the child may or may not go through. So basically, you, ha you have to admit that it's for your happiness. All right, well, I'm going to get into the position of the counsel for the defence for your parents now, OK, Raphael? I'm, right. I'm going to cross-examine yeah. you on their behalf. Here we go. Um, go. Yeah. Surely, surely, Mr Samuel, you would admit, you would concede that there have been many joyous moments in your life which you would never have experienced were you not here. Uh, if I if I wasn't here, it wouldn't have made me a difference anyway. So does it matter? Well, I put it to you that at times of extreme happiness, when you have reached a kind of nirvana of pleasure and joy, you would not give those moments up for anything in the world. I would. I would give those up for not existing at all. Then why don't you end it all? Because I don't believe in suicide. Let me bring in my, my counsel for the defence uh, deputy. This is, uh, this is Kevin. Hello, Raphael. Now, uh, let, excuse me for being nitpicking, but uh, how uh, on earth were your parents supposed to have warned you <laughs> that you uh, were yet to be born? Uh, there was no way. But uh, legally speaking, my argument will be on the basis of right to life. Uh, it's, co it's, like, it's complicated. Like The right to life is imposed upon us, and we don't have the right to death here, of course. Mm. And if, if I don't get the right to death, then why can't I sue the people who have forced life upon me? That is the legal argument. Mm -hmm. The moral argument is this, that if you cannot take the consent of your child, don't have the child. A, if you really want a child, adopt a child. B, these are the two issues. I mean, I would say that that would mean that no baby could ever be born under your system because uh, you, uh, it's impossible to consult uh, an unborn child about whether or not it wants to be born. Uh, that notwithstanding, what do your parents uh, think of your legal action? My mother is completely for it. I mean, she's even give us, given a statement, statement for the, uh, to the media saying that do not, uh, do not dwell upon the absurdity of what he's saying. Please understand the message. And she says, of course, she's a lawyer, so she will destroy me in court if, I, if that case comes up. Uh, when so do you that's, that's when, not an issue. Hmm. Raphael, when, when might this actually come to court? Uh, it's going to take me a while. To, I'm setting up a legal team, uh, a bunch of volunteers, because I'm not that rich. And uh, I will have to like uh, see the, the uh, 
small parts of it because see, I don't know even know if a judge will accept it honestly. Well, I so have to do my. Uh, Mm, uh, yeah. Here's a news flash for you, Rafael. I kind of think the judge probably won't, but you never know. He, he he may be up for the game. He may be up for a laugh. Obviously, your parents are going to vigorously defend this this action. Um, what will be their main plank of defence that this is an idiotic submission by you? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, they will <laughs> of course say they will give a motion for dismissal. That's for sure. Uh, but they will also be like you know. I mean, courts also depend on culture and stuff. So they they can give that cultural angle and the right and and stuff within right to life. So, do you actually get on with your parents? I I are, are you fond of them? Absolutely, very very much. When did you tell them then that you were going to sue them for having the temerity to to have you brought into the world? <laughs> Well, uh, this antinatalist concept was a, was always a concept at my house. And, uh, I mean, like, you know, I, I started bringing it up and they started agreeing because they said, you know, at our time, we didn't have an option. It was marriage and kids. Right. Uh, and they didn't realize that, at least my mother and even my grandmother. She also agrees with me. Your so grandmother I, I agrees with you. With your grandmother yeah, agrees with you. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you should call her as, as your first witness. Okay, <laughs> I, I know that, that a lot of our listeners are going to be saying, yeah, yeah, this is all good fun, but obviously he's got another agenda here. Are you actually seeking to publicise something? Is this actually just a way to get lots of people to come to your Facebook page? Or is have you got a deeper message that's actually going to be brought out if this ever does come to trial? Uh, it was always about the deeper message. I have a Facebook page, uh, the Nihil Anandas, you know. And it's been going on for a year without much traction. You know, like three, 400 followers, that kind of stuff. And I didn't care. I was just keeping, keep it, I kept putting this stuff up. And on that basis, someone interviewed me and it just blew up. Like, so uh, uh, publicity was definitely not my intention. I just doing some, I just do what I do. Uh, Raphael, how, how is your uh, legal suit being uh, treated in India? Is it causing a lot of ructions over there? Yes, yes, absolutely. Like people are, there are people supporting me, there are people against me. And then, of course, I have my inbox is full of thank yous. And, uh, you know, I have realized something and stuff like that. You know, it's very interesting. So you have definitely promoted a national debate there, which uh, is what you were trying to do. Yes. I, oh, yes. I always wanted some level of debate on this. And for years, the antinatalists have tried. But somehow I got lucky. OK, just a couple of quick questions about you yourself, Rafael. What do you do? What's, uh, how, do how do you make your living? Uh, so I'm a business. I do uh, business. I mm -hmm. uh, run a small security firm. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's about it. That's OK. I do. And do you have, a, do you have a, a permanent girlfriend or a wife? Uh, no, not yet. OK. Do you plan to? Uh, I wouldn't mind. But okay. So, 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 marriage at some point is going to be part of your life story. You will, you'll get married at one, one day. I'm not sure, but if it comes, uh, it comes to that situation, sure. Yes. Okay. Well, if it does, will you have children? <laughs> never. <laughs> you'll never have children. Well, you never. might. Well, then, then, then the field of potential wives has just narrowed dramatically because most exactly. women, most women, as indeed most men, actually want to have children. Oh yes, of course, and uh, I, I make that very clear. Even if I, if some, if it almost gets serious with someone, I make that very clear that you know I'm not going to have children. Uh, and what would happen? No. Okay. okay. And, and what would happen if, if, if the woman in your life fell head over heels in love with you, with this charismatic, funny, quirky, charming guy that you clearly are? I don't know what you look yeah. like, but um, you know, if you look anything as attractive as your personality is, then you know, you, you, you're a catch. Um, let's just say that after five or six years, she turns around to you one one Saturday morning in bed, and she t cups your your head in her hands, and she kisses you mm -hmm. on the forehead, and she says, "Darling, I've changed my mind." I'm 30 now. I want children. What would you do? Uh, it's definitely not happening. It's a divorce then. <laughs> it's a divorce. You would actually yes. di you'd divorce a woman if she changed her mind and said she wanted kids. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> OK, so I asked you this a little earlier, but I'm afraid your answer escaped me slightly. When do you think this might actually reach court? How, how long do we have to wait? Because we want to cover this story when it gets there. Oh, it's going to take a while because uh, everyone's a bit off. I have been called by lawyers and... Uh, threatening that they say, you know, that the court is going to find you. So I have to make my argument perfect. You know? Right, right. So uh, it's going to take me at least six to eight months uh, because no lawyer is coming forward. They're okay. all just threatening me. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, uh, let's see how it works.